okay so i'll share my screen and we'll begin um hope we cannot see my screen hello hope my screen is visible Yes, it's visible, sir. All right, so let's get on with it. So um, we are done with the project. For those that attended the first session, we are done. We've summarized everything. So we are going to send this project to GitHub. So we are going to see how to um, do that. So for some of us, we have a um, command prompt on our system while some has um, half terminal then some have boot so we are going to see how we are going to navigate both sides okay so first thing we are going to create uh, okay let's let's move on to pushing it to github then we we'll create a readme or oh, let's create a readme first let's create a readme file so but we've not done the plotting. We've not done what? We've done we've not done the plotting here. Plotting. We did this one in the first session. We did it in the morning. Okay, so here is our readme file. Readme file is let me show you what a readme file is on GitHub. Okay, please. Sorry. So we are not going to do this again. No, 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 no. I already sent send out um a message about this. Oh, okay. I thought the morning section and the evening section are the same. I I I sent out a message concerning that it's actually going to um, draw us back. So I adjusted it. it. The second session is just a continuation. Okay, so uh, I create a readme file. Please, so I'm not creating create a readme it. file on our desktop or you, the, you can uh, create it inside. Um, okay, for those of us using a um, VS Code as I am now, you just right click on this on your folder, then new file. Then readme is just norm, you just spell it this way capital letter readme that dot md md that's the file extension so that's how you create a readme file for those of us using uh, anaconda let me open it let it come up So for those of us using um, the Jupyter Notebook that is on Anaconda, all you need to do is just locate your folder where you are working from, then create a new file there, readme.md. Okay, let's come up. So let's say you are working on a desktop. Let's say you're working on the desktop and let's okay, let's assume your folder is this class. So once you are inside this your folder, just create a new file. New. Uh, yeah, new file. That's a text, no? Um, please hold on. Uh, Okay, so you rename it to readme.md. So it's now a readme file, GitHub flavor markdown. So that's how you create it. So it's going to be here. Here it is. 
So, so I remember I was, how you did it. First of all, you navigate to your working folder, where you're working from. Then you click on new. Click on text file. So once it opens, it's opening as a .txt file. So you just need to uh, rename no. it. Hello. You click on file. Click on rename. Well, let's see if save save works. Okay, save doesn't give us what we want. Click on rename. Let me take it again. So you locate where you are working from, the folder. Let's say it's desktop, and there's a folder on your desktop class. Once you are there, let me delete this ones. Once you are there. Click on new. Click on text file. A txt file will open. All you need to do is rename it. Click on file. Click on rename. Then readme.md. Take note, look at this place. It's plain text. So once I click OK, it will change to a GitHub. Um, Flavor, please hold on. Okay. Okay. So once you've renamed it, enter. You see, it has changed to a README. Mm -hmm. And here, here is now GitHub flavored Markdown. So that's how you do it on um, on your Anaconda. So I'm going to shut down this and set that. Sorry, can you take it again? How you do it on the VS Code? Okay. Please. So let me close this so that uh, my system will not be slow. Um, okay. All right, so uh, if you are working from your VS code, let me delete this. So your folder, just right click above it, like on top of it, then click on new file. Then write readme. That's md. Press enter. It will open. So um, let's let's leave that one for now. So let's go straight to pushing. Later I'll come to the readme. Let's just um push this project to GitHub. Okay, so I'll start with, um, let's, let's pay attention, it's a little bit tricky, uh, unless we are familiar with um, with um, command lines. So I'll start with, um, for those of us that have command prompt, let me start with command prompt. Are you recording this? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so I'll open my command prompt. Please, for those of us using command prompts, let's uh, pay attention. Okay, so I'm um, in my command prompt. So for me, um, all my files are on a different drive. It's not on my drive C, it's on drive D. I split it my drive into two. So this project. Please, can you zoom in a little? It's so tiny. Please. Sorry. Um, sadly, this is not. It's yeah, not, that's not um, better. That's not better. Is, is it okay like this? I can't zoom in more than this. So. It's not better. It was better than. Is it okay like this? No. No, the first small. one was better. The previous one was better. Yes. I'm trying to zoom in. It's not working. It's the same thing. Yeah, this is because it's in the corner of the screen. It's hard to see over. 
Please try try zooming in on your end. Uh, my own is not zooming in again. Uh, let me let me just okay. You are saying the other one is better than this one, right? Yes. yes. I can't yes. see this one. Anyone? I can see this one. This one is in the corner of the screen, so the text is blocking the code, so I can't even see the code. But that one's in the middle. Okay. Okay. Let me do it this way. So. Okay. Okay. So I was trying. To, I was saying my uh, this project actually is on a different drive. So I'm just going to switch to that drive. So in case yours is the same thing, just write the name of the drive, the alphabet, followed by the column. So I'm now in the in, in the drive um, that this project is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to where this work, this app project is. So it's on my drive D. Now to look at what the folders, I hope you guys are following, to look at the folders that is inside drive D. You don't call your boy. For command prompt, it's DIR to list out the contents of that drive. It's DIR for command prompt. If you have a pen and paper, you can write it down. Okay. So this project is actually inside. Um, mind you, it it is different in your own case. So for my now, it's inside this um, folder. So I need to navigate inside, like I need to go into that folder. So how do we go into a folder? You use a CD, change directory, CD to move into a folder. So after writing CD, you write the name of the folder. Now, if you watch closely, you notice that most of my um, folder names have an underscore. So the underscore is actually important. Why? Because you see that I just wrote the name of the folder with the underscore. Had it been, um, it was a space, like there are spaces in between, I will use a quote to cover it. If not, it's not going to work. I'll repeat. If <coughs> your folder name is, for instance, let's say this um, Titanic data set with a space, that is the name of your folder, it has a space. When you want to change directory into that folder, and close the name with a quote like this. But if you want to avoid this quote or maybe the quotes, uh, putting the quotes, just name your folder with an underscore. Instead of using space, use an underscore. Sorry, the folder you're talking about, are you talking about the one that is in um, Google Drive or the one that no, we no, are no, no. created your, by? On your PC, so on your system, on your system. Okay, you want to create my own folder where I'm storing my my projects? Yes. Talking about. Yes. Yes. Let me start again. Let me just start again. Please, let's pay attention. Send it so to if it's on desktop, we don't put drive. What will we put at the beginning? No, no. Not DIR then. If it's on desktop and not in drive. Okay. Um, let me let me come again. So let's assume your your folder is on the desktop, right? You don't need to change drive of a thing. You just need to work with your local drive, which is um, drive C. You locate your desktop. So I'm saying for my own case now, it's it's not on my desktop, it's in a different drive. That is why I had to switch to that drive, right? Okay. So yours could be it's on your desktop, so just leave it as it is. All you need to do is just write DIR for you to list out the folders. Or if you know the folder off part, like if you know the name of your folder, you don't even need to list it out. You can just go directly and navigate into that folder. So for mine now, it's inside this folder. So I'm changing direction by writing CD. I press enter. I'm now inside that folder. Initially, it was just D. Now I'm here. So if I want to see what is inside that folder, I'll just write DIR. So this project actually is, is inside um, DA project class under um, Python, then inside class. So I just need to navigate inside the Python folder. Okay, so I'm inside there. 
so the project is inside don't mind the lump put score is actually where i saved my own work yours could be just um entering into one folder mine is inside the front folder so don't get confused okay so i'll just go into the folder class so i'm there so my 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 uh all what i mean is you just need to navigate to where your project is you must be um, inside the folder where your project is so wherever it is on your system you just need to navigate into that folder so right now i am here i'm inside the class folder where all um, all the stuff we work on like the project itself is there so this is where you start um doing um, using the git command so first thing is you need to initialize uh, initialize the git on your local device so i'll say git init press enter so it says uh, initialize empty git repository in this folder so it has been successful so um you can go on to check the status git status so it's saying we have all this folder they are all in red meaning that we've not added it to we've not added it to git so to add all these um, files i'll use the git add now if i want to add uh, just one file i'll just git add then specify the file name but in this case i want to add everything so i'll just use a dot dot represents everything git add dot it will add up everything if i just want to add okay let's say for instance i just want to add only this page page one html i'll just say page one dot html let's check the status again you see that page one has been added it's now green then it's saying that this one's you've not yet um added so i'll just add everything using git add then full stop to add everything so it has added um page two page three reference and the rest of them if i check my git status everything is now green new new file new file new file so i've added now it's saying use um git this to on stage like go back to default but that's not what you want to do so the next thing after you after you must have add your files first of all you initialize your git you add it add your files then you commit so git commit minus now, what is commit commit is like um uh, it's like a message that is going to show on your github that okay for this set of files this is what is happening and uh, mind you it's not a must that it must be i know i don't know if you're observing what is going on here something is going on here okay so i don't know if you usually see um on github there are usually messages that um that shows what is going like the the versions of the project so the git commit is like a message saying okay these files i'm adding now to github this is what i did so 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 stuff or maybe after adding it you you made some changes then you add that new changes and say okay i corrected this plot to so 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 format so those are what um commit do they are just um simple messages to to tell um to signify what you just changed in that file so in this case i can write anything let's just say um create a local repo so git commit uh, space um a dash and an m then a quote and your message so i've commit so now what is what is happening now is we have a local repository it's not yet on the on our github so this is like the first stage you create a local repo and everything so we are done we are done here so i'll just go to um i'll open my github and then create a new repo so once you must have done this you open your your github 
let me go to my github okay so you create a new repo a new repository so this way you, you are going to um, give the name of your project so we can say um, web scraping anything of your choice just name it to fit what the project is all about so we say web scraping um, github github uses um, is underscore or a space or oh, it doesn't matter once you, you write the name then with space it's going to automatically add um, a dash in between automatically so we say web scraping um, top top data analytics frame or uh, web scraping top um, let's say top frames um, okay in uh, data analytics so this is just a sample do i have don't worry. This is just a sample. So I've named it. Then you, you don't need to do any other thing. This readme file, you don't need to add it because we added it locally. Remember, we created a readme file, so you don't need to check it. So you are done here. Just click create repository. Okay. So this place is actually also very important. If you are new to GitHub, what you have here is also very, 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 very important, right? So here now it's telling you if you have um, you can create a new repository from the command line, which is what we did, or we can push an existing repository from the command line, which is what we have, or you can import um, code from another repository. So if you remember we did some of this stuff. Remember we did git init, then we did git add, git commit and. Um, Yes, them changing their branch to main, which I will also do because um, I usually like changing my branch name to main. It's in master now. So once you've created this, just copy this link. This link inside here. Copy it. What you are going to do now is you are going to go back to the command line and do this step, this particular step. Like we want to add this remote address to our local repository so that we can push it to our github so we are going to go back to the command line now and do this step so anytime you create a new repository this will always come out as a guide so maybe you maybe perhaps you've forgotten the steps just know that this is what you have to do to create a repository on your local device and then push it so i'll go back i've copied the link then i'll go back to my command prompt so I'm, I'm about to add the remote address or if I say git remote it's going to say it's bringing out nothing it brought out nothing but now let's add it okay sorry I need to change let me change my branch to master it's in master I'm just going to change it to me. It's not compulsory. Let's just change it. Change the branch name. Main. Let's go back and see. Sorry. It's now main. Now, like I said, it's not compulsory. You can still work with the master. So um, we are going to add that uh, remote address. We are going to say git remote add origin. Then that website address I copied. Remember, this is where we copied it from. But you are copying the whole of this. So you just click on this icon here it will copy it. So you get remote add origin the web address then you press enter and the next step to do is just to push all these files to the github so let me um let me refresh this so right now there's nothing 
So let's go back and push what we have on our device to GitHub. So we are going to say git push minus u push to the origin our main branch. Press enter. So that's it. So it's now on GitHub. So you just need to refresh or you click on that. Have our files. It's now on GitHub. Okay. So um, okay, we still have time. So I'm going to. It's um, this is the project actually, right? So if someone wants to locate your project now, it's going to locate your locate you, then go into your repository, then locate that project or whichever one it is. So in this case, this is the one I just sent. So if I click on this, it will take me to um, the project environment. So we just need to um, spice this up by adding a readme. So once we add a readme file, it's going to display some summary, some write-ups here like a brief insight into what you did so for me i mostly after doing my project i summarize it and put the summary too on my readme so that anytime you come to any of my projects without even clicking on the notebook you can just have a glimpse at what happened so i just want to show you how readme will look like so once you click on a project like this and it opens, this is what a readme is. This is a readme for showing what you actually did. So it might hold it, it can hold different information. So depending on what kind of project you did, if you uh, I don't know if you've seen others, most of them are like um, they give you a link to some other like a, like a, a repository that is about um, package like building packages so you mostly see links to different versions so my point is readme is actually used to display like a summary of what is inside your main project so this is what we have something like this now we are going to add to our project so that whoever is coming without or opening the notebook itself the person can just look at what you were able to do with the project okay so we'll go back to our readme file now okay so um let's open our readme file i'm just going to copy i'm just going to copy the summary and mind you too readme is like it's a github markdown flavor right so this is also a markdown meaning that whatever you write inside you like how this stuff is being displayed is how it's going to be displayed on readme and um, this thing on a readme file like exactly how the stuff is here that is how it's going to be on your github it's just that you need to copy it and put on your readme so that's what i'm going to do um, i'll just come here control a control s so um i have this habit of adding a picture from one of my visualization just to make it a little bit in, uh, nice so i have the habit of putting at least one picture or more so let's just add this to the readme file so i'm just going to download this picture i'll save it so the picture is now here. Now, if you notice, we've made some changes to our readme. It's showing M. But I'll also show you. I'll also show you on the command line. Like there are some changes we've done. We've added a new plot. This plot now is not on our GitHub. We've also added a text to our readme. This text, as it is now, is not on our GitHub. So these are the new files now we need to add using Git add on our command line. So first of all, let me add this picture to our readme. So how do you add a picture to a readme? 
or a picture to a markdown let's do it here so that we will see it so let me add a picture inside here so to add a picture to a markdown but but uh like on jupyter notebook either vs code or on the other side this is how you're going to add picture to your markdown so here is like a name of the text that may be displaying there is no network so that one is not really important but this is where you're, you should put in your your plot so the, the name of the image is new plot so i click on this that's all so escape so i just added that picture i downloaded inside the summary so it's the same thing you just do so you come to your readme Exactly how it is here yeah, is how it's going to be on the other side. Now, if you want to preview for those using VS Code, if you want to preview your your readme, you just press Control, is it Control Alternate V? Okay, Control Shift V to preview it how it's going to look. Control Shift V. Okay, so we've added some text, we've made some changes. Let's go back to our command line. So let's let's do git status it to show us what is the current status of our git. So you can see it's saying you've modified your readme and then you've added a um, new plot. This new plot is actually not even on GitHub. So that's why it's saying on tracked files. While this readme is actually on GitHub, but then you made modification. So what we are going to do is I'm just going to git add everything. So, um let's get add um and I'll make a commit after adding you must commit it's like a necessary step you must commit give a small message about what you've just done so i'll say git commit minus n that do i modified um modified uh, modified readme Added. Let me just redefine the readme because the image is inside the readme. Then press enter. So this change is now is effective on your local device. So all I need to do now, I need to push, push it. So I'll say this. Hold on. It's pushed to the origin our main file so it has push it so I'll just come to where I have my projects now this is actually um, good if you are working on a continuous project and you are um, continually pushing it to github yeah, and if you don't want to be passing out through this trace you are doing, just make sure you finished everything, like everything about the project on your local device. Then you just come here, create a new repository, and upload the files. That's all. But then if you are someone that you are working on a project and you are pushing it to GitHub, you need to be committing and git add committing, add committing. If you are using VS Code, the interface is as easy as uh, clicking on the button. So let's look at this now. So, why is our image not showing? Our image is not showing. Okay, let's see. Okay, I didn't include it. Okay, so I guess I'll have to go back here. It's actually here, so I guess I did not save it. So that's why it's not showing. So let's save it. Control S. It's saved. Let's go back to our command line. It's add. I see you status. Let's do status again to see what's happening. 
readme was modified git add commits Let's go back there. I'll just refresh. It's up. All right. So this is it. We've successfully pushed the projects we have to our GitHub. So it's now on your GitHub account. Uh, it's now on the GitHub account, right? So. If you are doing a portfolio and you want to showcase your work, you just copy this link, put it either on your CV or whoever you want to send it to. When the person arrives, this is what the person is going to see. Just a brief summary. The person wants to go ahead. And what I usually do too is I usually um, bring out a link to the notebook here. So how do we do that? Instead of the person to look for probably the notebook that is having the main details, you can make it easy by bringing out the link to your readme. So I'm going to do that in the just now. Okay, so let's do that. So how do you do that? How do you add a link to your notebook directly inside here? So um, you click here. Now remember we use Plotly. Sorry, sorry, the thing is a little bit... Um, so if I go on any any question, let me ask any question first before I proceed. Any question? Yes, um, I don't know. Honestly, I really wasn't following the tips. Like, okay, I thought someone wanted to join. Is there a way we can pause the command? command uh, everything you type to the command sorry <laughs> is there a way we can have a screenshot of it because the in the com that's the command prompt um okay yeah i can actually send you a screenshot <laughs> okay. i can actually send you a screenshot i don't know is it also possible to do all this without going through the command prompt uh, yes 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 so um uh, that is if you are using vs code like it has an interface you can communicate with so the, the thing is i'm showing you like how you do it raw like with your bare hands right then if you are lucky to use um, vs code i don't need to go through all those steps i have my git already here so i'll just come to where it is so um okay there are no changes so it has an interface that make it easy right so you just need to work with the interface and for the commit now you just type in the message commit you want to push you just click on push but my just... my question is if it's the same, if it's going to be the same lines of code if it's what code is the same lines of code you use with terminal Okay, I'll, I'll come to terminal in a bit. I was about to do something. Okay, let me let me just leave this for now. Maybe later on we'll go into how to put a link to our notebook. So let's go to terminal. Let's work with terminal now. Um, I'm going to... I don't want my system to be slow. So I'm going to... Someone was asking for a screenshot of this, or is it the, the commands I'm using, or the screenshot of this? The, the command prompt, yes. The screenshots of what you did on the command prompt. Okay. Um, it's actually... Okay. Um... Use your ruler. Yes. 
people. I actually want to shut down this command prompt so that it will not slow down my system if I open my terminal. Because you know, working on this um, application or working from this side, you're actually working with your main system, like the back end, something like that. So it's become uh, slow, especially when I'm sharing my screen and my network is on. Is the last okay. I'm going to go work with the terminal now for those of us that have terminal yeah. right so let me put my terminal now terminal is a different command <coughs> to navigate Already, I've added this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some changes. Then we'll use this interface to do the git, um, git add and git push. So first off, I'm going to navigate again. For those of us that uh, maybe came in late, I'm going to navigate. Though it's a different um, syntax for listing, but then changing directory is the same. So like I said, mine is on a drive. It was on my D drive. So. Here you use CD to change to that drive. While on command prompt, I just type the name, the alphabet, and it work. So it's inside a folder called. Let me list. So if I want to list out the the contents of what is inside my drive D, I'll just write LS. So it will just list out. It's different from DIR you use on the command prompt. So if yours is terminal, just write LS, it will list out all the folder. So it's inside this um, <laughs> folder. So I would use it's the same CD. So I'm inside there. I use my list again to look at what is inside. It's inside Python. I'll change directory into Python. I'll look at what is inside there. So I'll change directory into class. Now we are where we're working, like we are here where our project is. So here you don't need to do the git init already because we've already established that. So let's check the status. Now this git uh, command doesn't work on a folder that is not a, a repository. When I mean not a repository, you've not done git init on that folder before. It won't work. Let's take for instance, I was in my Python folder. Let me just go back. I was in my Python folder. So if I do something like git status, it's not going to work. So in fact, I'm not a git repository. So it only works on a folder that you've, you've initialized a git in it. So let me go front. If I say git status here, it's going to tell me what is the current um, status. So it's saying my branch is up to date with origin um, with the one on github there is nothing to commit my working tree is clean so let's make some changes let's add that link we were talking about uh, before i go on does anyone have any question on this on the terminal part yeah, i try to follow but i'm using a mac and when i type the a folder like you were doing like I added documents, mm. it's it's a command not found. You, how do you like? You want to change directory into the folder? Exactly. So the folder. Does your folder have a space? The name of the folder. 
no yeah. documents doesn't so tell me what I want to be doing here if I bought it from here. It doesn't have a space. Okay. Yes, but as it is now, we've gone far already before the board. I, so I can't catch up if I want to use Who is this speaking? Too. Is the person speaking to us? I don't think so. Okay. So you are saying you want to, you've, you've seen your directories, like your folders, right? Yeah, I've seen my folder. So I'm trying to go into another folder. And I've typed documents, for instance. Okay. So what is this saying? Um, it's saying command no file. I don't understand uh, how, that. How do you, I hope you see this in small letters. It is. I've tried the small and I've tried the capital. <laughs> no, it's small letter. Then you are yeah, saying your, it, no, no. I'm not doubting you. I'm just like it's it's small letter actually. It's not capital. Uh, your folder name. Um, you are saying there is no space, right? There yeah, is no space. No. Uh, I actually can't uh, figure out what is the problem. Okay. Uh, okay, but continue. Continue with the continue with the lecture. Let me All right. Know. So. Um, does anyone have any other question? Yes, I do. When you type CD, sorry, CD, that's for command prompt. Is it in the Is it ash or we now type the document name? Or we press insert to type the document name? Okay, so CD, CD, it means change directory. Change directory. So once you write CD, it works with folders. It doesn't work with a file. So it's used to change, um, navigate into different folders or, di or different parts. So you don't use it on a file. Like take for instance, let me say I'm here and I want to say CD into, let's say, um, .csv. It's not going to work. Or let's say CD into readme.md. It doesn't work on files. You only use it on a folder name, like a folders. Right? Ask me that after typing the CD, mm -hmm. CD, did we put dot or we do, did double dot or do we put CD and then the name of the folder we are trying to? Um, okay. Get so um, why I use double dot here is I'm going back. I was going back. Like, I'm going backwards. Like, I'm leaving the folder I am now to the the parent folder. That's why I use a double dot. Double dot is like me going back. Remember, we were coming into this folder one after the other. Look at how we started. We started with coming into the D drive. We went into this folder, data analytics project class. Then we went into the folder Python. We are going front. Then we went into the folder class. Then we went in. so yeah i just like i went back to python that is why i use a double dot so if you are going forward just see the space the folder name if you want to go backward maybe one step you just write cd space a double dot the same thing applicable on command prompt hope i've answered your question Yes. Okay. So I uh, check status initially. It's saying everything is up to date. So let's go and make some changes. The changes we are going to do now is um, remember I said this, this. I'm using Plotly. So if I open that our notebook, you're not going to see the images. It's not going to be visible. So remember, it's not a must. You, you should use Plotly on your own case. You can use Seaborn, Matt Plotly. So if you use those packages, it's going to show, if you open it how I just open it now, it's going to show in your code here. So mine, I use, this product, I use Plotly. So Plotly is actually not going to show if you open it from your GitHub like this. So you see the, the pictures, the images are not here, the plots are not here. So if it's an expert and the expert knows that you are using Plotly, you know that obviously Plotly does not show on on a github so in order to avoid this so what i do is i copy this link after i must have opened this so after i must have opened the notebook as it is there is not 
I copy this link, I go to Jupyter Notebook Viewer. Notebook Viewer. So this is the Jupyter Notebook Viewer I was talking about. So I'll just copy the link of this my notebook. Then I come here. Now um I don't want to bulk you with too much information, but there are some there's how this notebook viewer behaves sometimes. It's just something I've I've, I've come to notice while working with it, right? So sometimes you might paste your link here and paste your link here, press on like enter go. You may not see your images here. You may not see it here that first time you use it, but don't mind, don't mind the notebook viewer, just leave it after some days come back and look at it again you will see your images it's a common issue so don't be scared maybe after you paste in your code here then you press enter your images is not showing don't be scared it's okay just need to do just proceed so i just paste the link on the digital notebook viewer and you can see that the images are here who is that Mm -hmm. It's you. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so it's showing here. It's showing and it's also interact. It are interactive. You can work with it. Do whatever you want to do. Look at maybe you want to focus on this. Whatever you want to do. All right. So once you've pressed it in that notebook viewer, you press enter and it shows you. Remember, this must be there if you are using Plotly. These two um, lines of code must be there for it to be visible in this place. So once you've done that, just copy this thing. This is the link now we are going to use on our README. So I'll go back to our README. Now I want to add a link to our project. So I'll do this how you add a link. So I'll say view notebook. Let me make this bold then control v so let's look at the preview this is how it's going to look like so we've made some changes so let's save it remember the other time we didn't save our picture and it wasn't reflecting so i've saved it now we are using terminal now so it's the same command lines the yeah, yeah it's the same commands so let's look at the status again. First time we look at it, it was saying it's up to date. So now it's saying your readme has been modified. So let's add it. Git add. I'm not going to use the dot this time around. I'll just specify the name of the file. Uh, it's optional. Mm -hmm. I can use a dot to add anything. Okay, good. Let's look at the status again. And green so next thing is to commit remember after adding you must you must commit so what did I do I added a um, link to view notebook okay enter what do we do now we push it it's on our local repository. We need to push it to the remote repository. And remember that time I, I typed git remote, nothing came out. If you want to know if you have the, a remote, when I mean remote, like the GitHub, a GitHub link on your on your system. If you want to check if you have such, just write git remote. Press enter. It will tell you that you have a a remote um, link on your system and the name is origin now i don't want to go into much details and besides i don't actually do use it but all these origin main they are all optional names that you can change all right so i'm going to push this 
let's say if git push normal git push will work and most times these git commands are always so tricky and confusing at times so i just decided to stick with one pattern but then you don't have to become and uh, write this git push origin main you can actually write git push only and it will push your work but remember the the the, the first very first time you are um, you just created a repository new and it's the first time you are pushing it to your remote uh, github you must use the git push um, minus u main sorry origin main you must write it this way for that first time then after onwards any other changes you do you want to push just write git push it will work so I've pushed it and let's go to our our GitHub and see the changes. So let's go back. Let's uh, refresh. So we have our view notebook. So instead of pressing, probably you have multiple notebooks. You can actually write some details about them. Let me say notebook one is let me say data cleaning. You can write data cleaning view notebook, data wrangling view notebook, or model building view notebook, or whatever you want to design your readme. It's it's up to you to design it to make sense. So I've just added a link. No need for the person to probably start looking for because of, now we have three and uh, notebook here, and it's actually because we are um, I'm conducting a class. You might actually end up having one. Maybe the person might just go and click on it. But in the case that you have multiple files here, you can just add a link to your notebook here, like we just did. So when the person just arrive here, just click here to take the person to that notebook viewer, and the person can now then see your work and everything. Okay, so um that is how you push a project to your GitHub account. It's still loading. So that's how you push a project to your GitHub account. Um, any question? Questions? I've tried the command prompt and it's not working. It tells me that it's always giving me the same response that all my, my what I'm asking for, the system cannot find the path specified. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, or maybe I need that screenshot. But my my system is command prompt that it has. Okay, but is the DIR working? Like the yes, the DIR is working. Yes. Okay. Have you been able to to navigate into any folder? I tried going to desktop. It's telling me the same thing. You can't find it. Okay. Uh, seriously, I don't know how to come in here. Maybe it's something I need to see. You send a screenshot. Maybe you send a screenshot on WhatsApp so that I can look at it. All right. Uh, I'll, you send a screenshot of it, then I'll look at it and know how to go about it. Um, any other question? Okay, please. Um, I want to ask what if you want to include the project on your CV? Okay, so you can actually add a project session. I like the, the link to the project. You can add it. You add a link using the um, hyperlink feature, depending on, on Microsoft Word. Um, guys, um, my <laughs> my router um, battery is actually low so just be expecting me to go offline um without announcing it okay so my, my router battery is actually low so you can add it to your to your git uh, sorry to your cv by using the hyperlink on um what am i doing on um on microsoft word let me just show you my current CV. You just need to add a project section to your CV. Then use the hyperlink um, feature on Microsoft Word and add it. 
depending on where you're actually working, where you are um, creating your CV from. But then Microsoft would have hyperlink where you can add a link to an external link rather. Where are you? I add an ex external link. Sorry. Okay, so this is my former my where are you? My former CV. It's coming up. It's taking time. Okay, so here is how I added this uh, my previous CV. So here is how you can add the link. You use the hyperlink function that is on Microsoft. I use, my, I use Microsoft to prepare this. So here is me adding the link to the project. Another link, another link. So depending on how you structure your your CV, you have a section for projects where you add the title and what you've been able to achieve then the link can come under, or anyhow you want to organize it. But then it's possible to add your link to the link to your repository on your CV. Okay, any other question? Any other question? Hello. We are done actually for the project. I've shown you how to send it to your to your GitHub. If you are using VS Code interface, you need to install the GitHub extension, and it's easier. But then uh, I also advise you you master the command lines on because you might end up being in an environment that maybe you go for an interview. They don't give you VS Code. <laughs> they just give you something else. So you just need to learn how to use the the command lines. It's actually very important before even getting to use the GitHub. Uh, sorry, the interface on VS Code. That's for those that have VS Code. I would advise you learn the the command lines before using any interface. Okay. So, uh, okay, I don't know if uh, hello, uh, Mr. Richie. Yes. So I don't know if uh, if we have like the the um, videos or this one just like we did last time. Because honestly, this um this um guitar it it, it, it requires some kind of I don't know practice and uh, one uh, really need to see what is done. I understand. Uh, the, this meeting is actually being recorded. So the thing is. This file size is very, very, very huge, right? So I'm looking at how yeah. I can reduce it before sending it to the channel. So I'm working on that. If I can't do it, I'll just make another video like I did the last time and send it up there. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you Thank something. You. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to show you something. Now, the, in as much as this is important, right, learning how to use all these commands, if you don't want to be doing it, just make sure that you finished everything concerning that project on your local device like everything you want to do inside you just make sure you've finished everything right you know that you are done you will not probably come back to it what i'm saying so is if you want to use this method i'm about to mention now um uh, make sure everything is done save it then come here come here and just um add file upload upload the file okay. It's as easy as that. Yeah, so just, <laughs> just upload them inside here. Maybe you create a new file in that directory. Just come here, click on upload. It will take you to your file manager. Though I've not, I've not actually used that method before. I've not used this method before, but this is how you do it. Yes, yes, that, that was what I wanted to ask too. I was thinking is, I was thinking that it's not possible to up to 
upload it from okay them. So, it's called directly so let, let, let me let me let me go back again so i'm saying if you don't want to do all this um, command line git this git that all this process right just make sure that your work like what you were working on your project you are done like you will not come and make changes so you are done what i'm saying so in case your file size is big okay so make sure you are done so once you are done come here create a new repository right then click on add file click on upload it will bring you to this place open then click on choose file it will take you to your file manager then you locate your file you click on it and you upload it's as simple as that then you, your commit all those commits you were doing this way you write it then you commit so that's how you do it so why I said you must be done is probably in case you, you make some changes. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, uh -huh. you know that you have to come and delete. <laughs> you have to come and delete that one you uploaded initially. Right? Then upload the new one again. Now, in as much as we are doing small, small work here, you might be working with some a project that is actually large. So changing it up and down will be an issue. So just make sure you are done with everything before you upload it manually like this. But then, um, if you are working on the project, it's a continuous project. Uh -huh. You can be using the git command or you use the VS Code interface and be working with it. Now, I wanted to also show you something on GitHub. So, um, this place. So, this is actually all the commit messages. You, all the commits. Even if you do upload it manually, if you commit, it to highlight green. So, whichever commits you do is... Hello? Hello? Hello, is someone saying something? No, sir. Okay. So, which, whichever... Um, here yeah, is actually showing how frequently you, you commit. Not like how frequently you could. How frequently you, you make changes on a project. Like, commits, make changes. Here is like a frequency that we're showing you for each day. So anytime you commit, it will indicate here that you've done something for that particular day. So if you don't want to pass through all this stress, just make sure your work is done before you come and upload it manually. So that's another way to bypass it. Or you join me <laughs> and download <laughs> VS Code. It's optional. <laughs> So the, the VS Code interface is actually what I use. Though I know of the command lines before knowing these ones, which is, like I said, it's also important because you may go for an interview, they don't give you this interface. They give you a command line. You need to Please, know how I, to I, use I'm it. I'm thinking VS Code. I'm thinking I should download it and use it instead. I actually don't know. You know, all these uh, applications, they increase as you use them. So I uh, actually don't know. You just need to check it online, right? So if you're using um, VS Code, let's say, for instance, hold on, let me admit someone. If you're using VS Code, and let's say you made and uh, you make some changes, let's say I added another space, just a space, Control S. Pay attention. Let me show you this. There's nothing highlighted, so let me save. So you see, something has been done, modified. So, if I'm using a, a, a um, VS Code interface, I just need to come to my Git um, office called Source Control. You must have seen Git version in job application. This is actually part of Git version. You're committing. It's like different versions of your project. So here is the changes. So I just need that git commit I used to write on the command line. This is where I'll just write in the message. I'll just say added, uh, <laughs> don't mind the message, added space, then commit. It will ask me, do you want to stage? Oh, before that, you can actually add. This is your git add. That one, remember, we used to, after changes, we do git add. This is git add. I click on it, it has add. Then, then after adding, you must commit. It, it asked me, okay, it, it's going to uh, commit. After the commit, remember, we used to push. 
So push is synchronized here. So I'll just click on come up. I'll just click on sync. And also, it's not a must that if you commit, you must push it immediately. You can actually commit several messages and without pushing it. Maybe after you are done, you cannot then push. My point is, if I should make another change, let me say, let me delete that space now. Control S. So remember, I did not, I did not push. Push is actually this icon you are seeing here. So I can actually commit for the new changes, changes I did. So I git add, git commit remove space commit. It's going to show me that I have two changes. Then I just need to click on it. It's going to push it. Send two changes which I need to push. So I'll just click on it. This action will pull and push. Just click OK. So it will push it to GitHub. So this is just the interface I do use. But if I want to create, like, initialize, uh, start the create the local repo like I did when I started Git in it, I work with the terminal. So VS Code has terminal too. Where you can work directly. It's coming up. So here's the terminal on Git. Um, sorry, on VS Code. So if I want to create a local repo like I did on command prompt and terminal, here's where I do it on VS Code. It must be on the terminal if you are creating a local repository. It you must start with the, with the terminal or command prompt for creating a local repository. It's only when probably after you must have created it here. Initialize it, you can now start using the interface to push. So it's slow, but here is the terminal on VS Code I do work with. Okay, so any question? Our next project is SQL. Yes, and um, please, I want to add. Yeah, go ahead. It's also a question. That's, um, you said we can use the other method to upload the files directly. Yeah. From, uh, to GitHub. Yeah. Okay, the, look, that means those, um, uh, the link, those, um, that link that you added in the summary, you can't do all those ones there. No, no, you can't. Or there will no need for them, it's just to. No, you can, you can. Remember, the link is inside a readme file. All of them are all files. So you uploading, you're uploading all the files after you must have done all the changes on your working environment. So they are all files. You're you uploading, you're uploading the files and the contents. So you you can add your link. It's not you, it has nothing to do. You uploading it has nothing to do with the link. You can add your okay okay. I think I know where you're heading to. So you must have uploaded no, your. I don't, I don't, what the, what the, Go on, go what on. I mean is, uh, you know, yeah, that's, that's the other one, one, the other, other one, one that you did. Mm. Like when the person clicks on your, clicks on the link, as the person can view like the summary of the project and click your, click on the view notebook. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But like the one that you said, we can do directly from GitHub. Will the person see all those summary the graph and plot this and plot? That's something that you plot. You use plotly to do. Before clicking, opening the notebook. That's what I mean. And let me go to the project so that. I will... Okay. Um, you you are referring to this link, right? Yes. Uh, like this this summary part of it now. Mm. This summary part of it that the notebook the. The uh, graph was showing and the summary below it. Mm. As a, the person also see it, like when you upload direct, when you upload from GitHub, um, yes, yes, upload yes, the notebook yes. from Yes, from actually, the actually, this part, this part is your README file. Here, look at README. Here is that README file. So, if you have a README file, in, look at README here. If you had, have this file, if you upload it, it will show here automatically. So, whatever you save inside here, and you upload it to show you automatically. It will show you okay, automatically. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, I understand you. 
Okay, so let me. Uh, we've created the. We've uploaded the project. So our project. That's how I usually tidy up mine. So let me just show you. Remember, it's project. Everybody have their own way of doing it. So for me, after oh, uh, sending my project to GitHub, putting the readme, adding a link. Um, I usually um give a brief description and add some tags like you can see in some of them a brief description of what the project is all about then tags tags are like what um, what is inside this project like for instance it's python it's about cells it's data science i use plotly there are some visualization here there is manipulation it's about africa so there's attacks so for this our own now how we can add something like that is you click on the project click on the project, you come to where you have the description. Here, just click on the settings. So let me zoom in. So you click on the settings. Then here is where you add the project description. So you can say um, script data script um, data about Help data analytics company from good terms website. So here's where you add the tag. So this project we did web scraping. We used beautiful soup. And this, what this tag do, does is if someone comes to GitHub and search for anything using any of these keywords, your project will come up too. We did, we use Plotly. We, we did some data cleaning. So you just add things that are involved. Sorry, I think I've just saved it. So you just add things that has to do with the project in it. So once you go back to or repository, sorry. Once you go back to your repository, it will show the description and here it is. So someone will just look at the project. Oh, it's about this. Oh, this is what is involved. The person can now then click on it, go inside and oh, this is the summary of your work, something like that. So this is how it's going to be for the rest of the project. Any project we do, once we are done, send it to GitHub, um, style it a bit. Just keep doing projects so that once you are applying for a job, you have something to showcase and then you also have confidence to talk about it. Or maybe if they ask you questions like uh, the one they really ask, maybe what is the, the hard, one of the tough projects you've worked on or what is the challenges you face while working on projects, all those kind of things. Or maybe it's something that is on your CV. You say, okay, talk more about this project you did. Then you know how to start explaining things and working on it. All right. So that's, that's it for the GitHub part. So um, our next project is going to be on SQL. I'll send the requirements what we need to install. All right, any question? Uh, Mr. Richie. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, you said that we are done with this project. Okay, yeah, not just to say that we see that we, as we started, we, we, we finished it. So, but I want to find out, like, um, using a Python for, for data analytics, is it just web scraping that you can use it for or no no, no 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 okay so the thing is um we we just started right and this is just like a simple a simple project to start with i remember we have people that are actually new to the fields you understand so um, yeah. this is is not you can't it's not just web scraping obviously we can't you can do more now. You can do more with more with uh, with Python. So I just started with something simple to to put everyone together and also understand how it's going to be right before we start going deeper. 
Okay. Um, yes. Okay. So we are going to touch some advanced, look at some uh, professional business cases like um, the one, like something similar to that of Data Camp, answer business questions. We are just taking it like from. Oh, it's from right, right, right. Yeah, All gradually, right. gradually. Mm. So there are a lot you can do. Yeah, just few of my projects hackathon, food claims, bank transaction. Fuck, and um, this one's actually quiz. Um, crude oil analysis is actually one of the <laughs> one of the projects I've done that I'm actually uh, I don't know I'm just happy with it. Like I combined SQL and Python together to do this project. So okay. you can do some other. This one is a tax. This one is prediction. ADA. This one is a is a, a script, an automated script to uh, do perform abbreviation. There are a lot you can. We are going to cover. That's going to touch every everywhere. There's a lot we are going to touch. So we are just starting with something basic. The SQL now we are going to do. We are just going to learn how to um, create a database, bring in a C a CSV file. Ah, my. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Where are you? Where are you? Sorry guys, uh, my router is my router has gone up. Sorry about that. I forgot to go and charge it when I went out. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So, sorry about that, yes, man. <laughs> my router has gone off, so um, I'm using my phone. So that's it. Um, maybe if you have any other questions, just send it on the group chat and we'll reply to them. All right, thank you. All right, uh, I'll give you guys.